What's up, YouTube? Today we are looking at making impacts from scratch. So you can use these in various genres. I mean, pretty much most electronic dance music genres would use impacts somewhere in the track, like in the beginning or at sort of breakdowns and stuff like that. And I'm going to show you guys a couple of sort of techniques that I use to create them, either using samples that already exist in the track and synthesizing them from scratch. So let's dive in and have a look. So if you've been following my tutorials, um, you've probably heard this track and it's got a bit of a sort of breakdown section that starts a little bit abruptly after a sort of uh, bare kick and bass section. I was thinking it's the perfect place to put in an impact and I could possibly use that again in the intro or, you know, use it as a sound effect throughout the track. So I'm going to show you guys a couple of techniques that I use. Um, this is the sort of part that is in question. So the first and most easiest way to create an impact is to probably use a the, the kick sample that you've already got in the track and to apply a ton of reverb onto the kick and, you know, change the reverb, put some filter and all sorts of stuff on either pre or post the reverb and play around with sort of sound design uh, techniques, but using uh, kick and then the reverb. So I'll show you a couple of uh, things that I usually do. So let's just copy this guy onto a new track. And what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to render it out just to uh, sort of make sure that all of the processing and stuff that I've applied, like EQs and stuff is going to be applied to the actual sample itself. It just makes it a little bit easier when sort of processing it and stuff like that, um, especially if you've got a lot of processing on the kick channel already. As usual, I've created way too much tail on this, so we can just make it a bit shorter. Uh, we can actually go ahead and remove this. So here, what I want to do is I want to apply Cubase's stock uh, reverb, um, but I want to use the impulse response reverb. So I'm going to explain a little bit about what impulse response is compared to regular reverb. And I'm also going to show you guys a couple of cool impulses that I like to use. So for those who don't have Cubase, I'm going to post a link to this other impulse response reverb that I know of that's free. Um, and you can load up this uh, bank of impulses that I'm going to show you guys uh, into that uh, reverb. So this is the free impulse response reverb that I was talking about. I've already got quite a cool impulse response uh, reverb built into uh, Cubase. But for those who don't have one, this is cool. It comes with a bunch of free presets, but I believe that they also sell some sort of more high end uh, presets that you can load in of impulse responses and stuff like that. Here on this website, Sample City, they've got impulse responses from a Brickasty M7 reverb, which is one of the like really high end expensive studio reverbs on the market. So yeah, this is a really cool library to download. It comes in various different formats that work with various different sort of reverbs. I know that different uh, impulse response reverbs have different uh, needs in terms of whether they need 48K or 44.1 and the different bit rates and stuff like that. So you can choose uh, how to download your library to best suit your specific reverb plugin. So I definitely suggest everybody check it out. So anyway, back to Cubase. Here we've got Cubase's Reverence Reverb, which has this import function over here, and that allows you to import WAV files, uh, like specifically from that Brickasty library, which I was telling you, or any sort of WAV files to use as impulse responses. So you can create your own, and if you guys want to know how to do so, let me know in the comments, and I'll do a video specific on how to create your own impulse responses. Um, but other than that, I'm going to show you how to load up uh, this uh, sort of library and use those in pretty much any uh, impulse response reverb. So here we've got the folder. Um, it's broken up into all the different sort of styles, like uh, rooms, plates, halls, all, so all sorts of stuff like that. Um, these ambience ones are really, really cool for creating impacts and that kind of thing, as well as these spaces. You get all sorts of weird kind of uh, uh, stuff like churches and all sorts of things that you can use. So here, I believe it gives you three different samples, left, right, and mid side. So again, depending on what your reverb calls for, I believe uh, the one in Cubase is only uses a mono signal so we can just load up one of the sides and let's listen to what that sounds like on this kick
I guess that's why that Precasti Reverb costs so much because it sounds damn awesome. I mean, just the first random preset I chose sounded good. So anyway, the reason I like to use impulse responses is you can do weird things in terms of like how the impulse response is being processed in the audio in terms of like how it's scaled in terms of the time and how much tail is being applied. So you can kind of warp that sample in the plugin, if that makes sense. So you can play around with these to adjust it. And I find it's a little bit easier to control than a traditional reverb because often you just have like a room size or something like that. And it widely kind of changes the dynamics or the tone of the sound. Whereas this is more sort of, um, you'll hear what I'm, you'll hear what it does. Let me just switch over to the audio. It almost feels a little bit more precise. Um, I mean, obviously some would argue your yeah, traditional reverb sounds less digital or whatever, but this is what works for me and this is how I do it. So anyway, I kind of liked how it was, uh, you know, just at default with that massive sort of impacty type of sound. But also what I like to do is I like to put a filter before uh, the reverb. So let's just add on Cubase's Morph Filter. And what this does is it allows you to kind of roll off that like clicky top end. And that helps to create more of a boomy sort of impact sound. Let's just set this Morph Factor down so it's a low pass filter. And then we can play around with these settings while it's playing. So the reason I rendered these types of things out is to make it easier to quickly, you know, create reverse effects and those types of things with them. So in, in Cubase, you can just right click and click reverse, and then you create this type of thing. One thing to note though, especially one thing to note when using reversed impacts is I don't like it to go all the way. And then I also create a little bit of a fade out right at the end and shift it along like that just because when it gets to the point where you're hearing that kind of reversed kick, it can take away from the, the sort of impact of the first kick of the next bar. Okay, I just realized that there's actually a break here with a sort of glitched kick and bass section. So having too much low end there won't work, but I mean, you guys get the picture in terms of creating that reversed impact effect. Anyway, so here, that's how I create a impact using the kick sample. So what we can also do is we can synthesize an impact from scratch. So I recently did a video on Native Instruments TRK-01 Play, the kick version of that. I like to use that to create kicks, but also impacts as well, because it's kind of designed to create that type of thing, like a kick type of sound. Um, and it's just very easy to get that type of thing going in the plugin. Um, if you want to know more about it, check out the video. I'm going to post a link in the description. But anyway, let's get that going. So here what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to initialize it and then set it over to synth on both sides, but we'll probably end, only end up using the one layer. So already you've got this uh, pretty usable sort of low end impact sound that when you place a, um, a reverb on it, you immediately get a sort of impacty type of sound. And then you can start playing with these settings to kind of uh, fine tune the exact impact that you want. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually just gonna drag the reverb from this channel and copy it over to the new channel. And I'm not going to use the filter because we can actually use the way that we synthesize the kick to, you know, maybe not create that kind of high end 
sound in the impact. Anyway. So when you synthesize it, you've got a lot more control over the tone of the sound. Um, you know, you can kind of create like a resonant filter or distortion or something like that, like I've done here. You can create a very sort of percussive click right at the beginning, uh, like I've done here, or you can take it away for just that kind of boomy low end. And the other cool thing is you can tune it to the sort of key of your track just to kind of get that sort of continuity in the break. So let's put in a note here. I just want to double check what the note of the bass is. So anyway, you don't have to go that overboard. You don't have to create a sort of uh, distorted kind of vibe like that. You can create more of a kick vibe with the reverb. I just kind of wanted to create more of a variation considering that we did a sort of sampled kick impact uh, just now. Awesome, I hope you guys enjoyed that. Let me know what you think in the comments. A big thanks to IDM Mag, proud supporters of the dance music scene and my channel. I'm going to be uploading a couple of these impacts and splashes and crash type sounds to my Patreon for all my $5 supporters. So if you want to know what that's all about, head on over to the link that's going to be somewhere on the screen right now. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. See you guys next time.